Now, so this is lesson 2.6, representing millions. As I mentioned before, um, you have to be responsible for knowing up to the millionth place. Okay. Now, again, some of you were away last class, so just copy down what I have on the board. So I think Jack and Matthew and were you here? Okay. Um, so I'm going to do my little line here because they don't have it for time here. I need one here. All right. Now, where do I put the decimal point on this chart? Between which two places do I put the decimal point? Kate? Between the ones and the tenths. Okay, good. So between these two places here. Now my next question is, to the left of the decimal point, what kind of numbers do we have? To the left of the decimal point, what kind of numbers? Um, Carlin? Whole numbers. Thank you. Now to different color now. We're going green here. To the right of the decimal point, therefore, what kind of numbers do we have? Um, Rohan? Decimal unit. Okay, thanks. Now, so again, if you don't have this on your chart, jot this down because this you can treat this chart like the uh, the hundreds, tens, ones chart that we did earlier in the unit on uh, understanding large numbers. Now, remember that we want to treat periods here because that'll help us remember which place each digit takes up. So, what is a period? First of all, what is a period? What is a period, um, Natasha? A period is like three numbers, like the tenths, hundredths, and thousands. Right, and you actually already identified the first period. How many numbers in a period? Three. Always three. So the first, I'll do black here. The first period is this one. Therefore, hands up. What's the second period after the decimal? What three? Which three numbers, Jack? Okay, okay. Um, Brianne? So what's the, okay, well you can answer this because you were here last class. So the, the group of three numbers that goes in the next period, which would be what? Um, 10,000, 10,000, There you go. Okay. Not in this case because there's no ones, right? Um, okay, I'm just going to do this period. This is the second period. Now, the, what, the reason why we have to have periods again is because it has to help you. It has to help you name the decimal. So, say if I gave you a number like this, okay. Now, does someone remember last class we talked about naming a decimal number this big properly? Because remember, you have to go by the period name but also you have to go by the place that occupies that occupies the rightmost column, if that makes sense, okay? So anyone want to try to name this decimal number? Um, Spencer? Um, so start with the ones first, obviously. Two and 176,641 million. Excellent. Okay. So notice how Spencer, he, um, obviously you have to have the and here because it divides the whole number from the decimal number. And then you're always naming the last one of the period and the last one of the period of the number, I mean, sorry, of the place it occupies. Now, in between the periods, what do you usually have? When you're writing out a number, say, a decimal number this big, in between the periods, what do you have to have? Trevor. Not a comma for decimal numbers. Careful. Commas are actually only reserved for whole numbers, so you have to be careful there. So therefore, what can we use instead to distinguish one period from the other period, especially if you have a string of five or more digits after the decimal point? Michael. Thanks. Okay, so say for example, I want someone to try reading out this number here. Um, um, um. Okay. 
Now, keep in mind that there is a larger space in between the 2 and the 0. And I have to do that because I have to split up the periods. And this is how you would see it. Does anyone want to try reading this number here? Um, Maxton. Okay. Um, 7 and 792,000 and 2 million. Okay. Pretty good, but... Yeah, that's good. So just be careful not to say the and in between here, but you had it all correct. Okay, so you named it all correct here. All correct here. Okay, is that any other questions to do with this, Julia? Just seven hundred ninety-two thousand, because you're always naming it according to the last place in the period. Okay, yeah. So that's why we have to split it up into periods so it makes sense. Now, um, what about this one? I'll give you guys one more. Um, you can see this. Okay, uh, uh, two ways of saying this maybe. Can you everyone see that one? Maybe two ways of saying this one. Two ways of saying this. Okay, Sarah? Um, the first one is um, one and Two hundred eleven thousand thousand um, and twenty million. Okay, good. So be careful not to say the N in between, but you got that. Yeah. Now she said twenty million, and that's one way to say it. Okay, so one and two hundred eleven thousand twenty million. There's actually another way to say this, but you have to be careful the way you say it because of the fact it's more to do with the last decimal yeah. place. Um. Then you want to try? Um, okay. Start from start from here first. There you go. Okay, and then? Keep going. Okay, that's what Sarah said was 20 million, okay? He has it right, except for the fact that um, this was said already, and that's one way of saying it. But remember, it has to do with the two. And yes, I know the bell went, but we're going to finish this. Okay, uh, Serena. I'm not sure, but I think it's one and 211,000. Um, Excellent. You can say 20. Oh, sorry. You have to say 200,000. Sorry. You're right. It has to be 1 and 211,000, 200,000. You don't, it's 20 million, okay, because that's the last place. No, 200,000. Yes. 